Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Man, it's been a while since I've been in the shop, but uh, life is starting to slow down. And if you uh, were observing, about a month ago I got a video out with uh, my son Michael and I doing a power steering pump on my truck. So um, since I'm able to get some time here and there, I decided that, well, I want to get done what I can get done. Probably not make any promises on anything. But the next thing I want to do is, um, you know, I like to get uh, my Burke Mill back together. And uh, for guys of you who remember that, I've stripped it and painted it. You know, so I've ended up with this color here. It was supposed to have been like a green hued gray, but it ended up being gray. And if you've watched those other videos, or more of a blue gray, if you've watched those videos, then you know what I'm talking about. So um, everything's stripped down, ready to go. It's in pieces, um, ready to put it back together. But now I want a bench. Now, at first I thought maybe this uh, little bench here that I that I have here might do, um, but it's actually a little large footprint-wise, and probably not as stout or as heavily built as I would want it. So what I've settled on is a bench that's. Uh, all two before construction, use a solid door for a top and a shelf that uh, I can add these. I have these leftover adjustment legs that I can put on the bottom um, to level it up if need be. And uh, I've put, put myself together uh, sort of a rough design. I mean, that's kind of crazy looking, color coded, but that's for an assembly. And then I have a cut list for all the parts. And uh, tell you what, um, why don't we just go ahead and let me let me discuss the design. So the mill is about 14 by 21 inches, uh, its footprint on the base. So I've settled on a workbench designed by Bear Mountain Builds. Uh, it's this modular workbench for beginners, and it's basically a two before constructed workbench with a top and a bottom. The uh, bench will be about 36 inches tall uh, using a solid door for the top and the bottom. And I've had some ports here uh, across the middle. The um, I don't think it really needs it, but I'm hoping for a little weight. So the bench size would be 20 inches wide by 24 inches deep. So I used an application or uh, an online tool on the internet called OptiCutter. And basically you specify the length of your stock and what size pieces and how many you want, and then it lays them out to get the most um, usage out of your two before taking into account the saw kerf width. So this little bench here is going to take five two befores, and OptiCutter uh, color codes them so that uh, you know you can see what they, I guess what they look like or whatever. But I went ahead and used that same color code in a um, in another drawing here so that they match the color codes more of an assembly guide than anything else and then the only other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add some leveling feet to the bottom that were left over from a cnc project they're uh, rubber uh, hard rubber uh, feet um on a on a steel shank threaded shank just so i can level it up in case if i move it or anything like that so the next thing to do of course is uh to go out and cut these uh, pieces of two before up and start assembling this bench. Okay, so there are all the pieces cut out. Stretchers, legs, frames, braces, everything. It took five eight-foot two-by-fours. What you see here is my scrap, about a 34-inch piece of two-by-four left, and then these little bits. So the OptiCut or whatever that uh, cut linear foot cut calculator that I used online worked out pretty good. So I guess from here, I need to put this thing together. So I'll see you back in the shop. All right, now that we have all the parts cut out, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the inner and the outer legs. The uh, outer legs were 27 and a half inches and the inner legs were 34 and a half. And the only thing I've really done here is I've uh, placed a just a stop over here on the side so that when I lay my 
two before up there. Um, I have, a, I have a definite stop and then I'm just aligning flush with this old solid door that I've been using as a bench top. So uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of two before and space that just like this and I'm going to spray glue and screw these down. So let me do that. Okay, so I'm going to put my spacer here, lay that right up there. Now, I'll, again, I'll link to Bear Mountain Builds, um, where this table is based from, or this bench is based from. Um, so I'm just going to put like three screws in there. You know, what I'm using are two and a half inch uh, exterior wood screws. Uh, these are the bugle head type. I'm hoping that we'll pull it down. And my only goal here is just to give it some sort of clamping, right, without... Um, but, uh, you know, without having to actually dig out clamps. So, let's see here. I'm just going to guesstimate this about the middle. And I've just run that down to the head is just sort of just below the surface. Double check things. that's screwed down okay so this is the uh, outer part of the leg this is the inner part of the leg uh, I'm gonna do three more of these are stacked up right there let me get those done and we'll come right back okay with the uh, front and or with the, the side the outer and inner legs done it's time to put on the side stretchers these are the 24 inches uh, long uh, that provide the depth of the, of the bench and all I'm gonna do here is um, I'm going to put a coat of glue out here on the uh, end and then uh, square it up and I'll use a couple of screws to screw it down after it's squared. So let's do that. <clears throat> now while I want it reasonably square, I don't think it has to be perfect. Um, if it's a little bit out, I can uh, take it up with the uh, leveling feet. All right, so there's that. And I'll put this back up against my stop and lay my piece in here. Okay. I'm going to get it flush with the side. And I'm just going to take a framer square and put this squared. Looks pretty good right there. Good right here. And I'm just going to put two screws. Now I got to be mindful not to put the screws where I'm going to have some pocket screws going. So I'm going to shoot more toward the middle. And probably should have pre drilled that, but I don't think it'll matter after the glue dries. One about right here. So now I'm going to do the same thing all the way around until I get it um, all four done. I'll get them all, uh, let me get them all screwed in and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have the side, the legs and the side stretchers are in. I think I'm just barely in frame. The next thing to do, I got the uh, front and rear stretchers and these are, I believe, 14 inches, right? Give me a total of about 20 inches wide. And what I want to do is I'm going to pocket screw 
uh, two pocket screws into each end, right? And uh, like that, so I can fasten to these outside pieces. And then I'm gonna probably put two or three pocket screws here, okay? And so that when I attach the bottom shelf, I can screw into the bottom shelf and uh, the top, I can screw into the top. So if I can sort of get this over here, um, I'll also do the same thing here, whatever I call my top off. I'll, I'll put about three pocket screws into here uh, and then in the bottom part down, down here so that I can screw the shelves on. And that'd be the basic frame. So um, I'm using a Craig pocket jig. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. I just got the little most basic one. And uh, what I'll do is I'll clamp this on to the end of uh, my wood shifting all oh, about like that maybe okay get make sure my ends are there flush against my wood I've got got it set to inch and a half material because that's what I'm screwing into just going to tighten that down and then I have the depth stop on my drill set, so I'll just drill these. These are sort of going to be haphazard, but it's about the only way I can do it. And then I'll move the jig over a little bit and I'll do a second one, but I'll show you that. You see that there's this little pocket and then the screw goes in like that so I'm sure you guys have seen those so like I said I'm going to do two on each end of my 14 inch pieces here that will connect like this and then I will do some uh, two or three across the top of each one where it will connect to the top and the bottom of the uh, of the of the bench so I'm going to do that and then I'll bring you back in when I'm done I'm sure you guys want to see all that so catch you here in a little bit Okay, now that I have all the pocket holes drilled, okay, and um, the side stretchers and then the top and the bottom, all I need to do now is uh, get it screwed together. I've clamped a piece of wood here to the frame, sort of try to hold this square while I put in these two and a half inch pocket screws. Now, this, uh, the, when I put the top on, it will stiffen it up, the top and the bottom, it'll stiffen it up quite a bit. Um, that. I'm going to attach uh, the front and the back. Alright. So you're going to get the idea. I'm going to attach all the four posts here and then I'll uh, attach the, uh, the other side which is going to be a challenge because there's not really a lot of room to get up in there. I might have to find a, a a right angle attachment or see if I can borrow one from somebody or something but anyway you get the idea let me get uh, let me get this all screwed together and uh, and then we'll go from there so I'll see you here in just a minute all right so the main structure of the bench is done this uh, cross support is just sitting here because I'm gonna uh, show you something so I'll put um, a 20 by 24 top on this and a, and a shelf down here where my foot is I don't know if you can see that and then it'll get pocket screwed up in, into there, and then I'll put the brace in. Um, but to give you an idea, here's the base plate to the uh, mill, and you'll see that it's, I'm gonna, I plan on sort of putting it flush to the front, right? And then um, it gives me about three inches around, all the way around. So that's sort of the uh, general idea. So I'm gonna call this video here because it's getting long. I'll uh, bring you back in when I do the top and um, fasten in the, uh, the, uh, the the central supports right here. Again, I don't think it really needs it. I'm, I'm putting them in there primarily um, just for a little added, uh, added extra weight. And then I'll put uh, some leveling feet on the bottom because, you know, this is just rough carpentry. There's nothing special about this. I was just looking for some uh, a bit of weight, right? And then, you know, i got nice flat edges here on the inside that I can uh, mount some drawer hardware, put some drawers in, 
uh, once I figure out how far down the uh, screw will come with the knee with the uh, knee all the way down. And then on the sides, I think I'm going to put in a strip over here and then hang some pegboard so I can hang some clamping hardware or something on the sides of the uh, of the bench. So anyway, uh, I got a question though. Should I? Uh, I think I got plenty of paint left. Should I go ahead and paint this uh, this bench here and the top and everything to match to match the belt? I mean, if I got the paint, should I do it or just leave it wood or what? You guys, let me know. So hey, look. Um, I know it's been a while since I've uh, been in the shop, and I'm slow about getting videos out. But uh, man, life has life has been pretty busy. And uh, but I, I have had an opportunity to get out here a little bit, and I thought I'd share this with you. And and uh, I'm thinking that uh, if this works out pretty good, I'm going to do the same thing, uh, make a, a very similar one for my drill press, right? Because my drill press has got just a little bit of a smaller footprint. My bench, my bench uh, drill press. So. And then that would get it off the big wide cabinet that it's sitting on just to free up some space. I know you guys haven't seen my shop, but man, is it, it's cluttered. I mean, it's bad. But anyway, I'm going to get back on this. Tell me what you think, and um, thanks for your patience. Thanks for sticking out with me, right? And I appreciate it. Uh, if, uh, if you care to, uh, like and subscribe and share with your friends. And other than that, have a blessed day.